Welcome to the Marion County Board of Commissioners meeting. It's Wednesday, March 21st, 2018. We're in the Senator hearing room here at Courthouse Square, and we begin our meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. So would you join us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So we begin our meeting with public comment, and there was no one signed up for public comment, so we'll move right into our consent agenda. And I'm not sure whose turn it is. Madam Chair, if I could, I'd make a motion to approve the consent calendar this morning. On it, in it, under Public Works, approve an order appointing Julie Jackson to the Solid Waste Management Advisory Council with a term ending February 26, 2022 and receive notice of hearings officer's recommendation and schedule a public hearing for May 2nd, 2018 to consider a zone change comprehensive plan, case number 17004 Helms, clerk's file 5741. I'll second the motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve those two items. All in favor say aye. 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 They are approved. All right, under uh, action items, the first item is under Board of Commissioners, and we have Carrie Sessoms here. You're, we're so excited that you could come this morning. Uh, this is to consider approval of an order appointing Carrie to the Marion County Public Safety Coordinating Council with a term ending July 31st, 2021. And Lisa Miller, uh, you want to kick it off? Lisa? Good morning, sure. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, Commissioners. Lisa Miller with Business Services, Volunteer Services Coordinator. I'm just here this morning to introduce um, a new uh, appointee recommended to our Public Safety Coordinating Council, Carrie Sessoms. She's here to introduce herself and answer any questions you may have. Very good, and Carrie is the representative of the Local Alcohol and Drug Planning Committee, correct? Correct. And so they recommended, uh, I think it was Jeff Putterbaugh that was in that role before, and so he is no longer part of that committee and uh, Carrie was the one that was selected to take his place. So we're very excited to have you because I've known you for a very long time yes. and I think you'll lend a great perspective to the Public Safety Council. So why don't you tell us a little bit about you, who you are and why you're interested in being on the council. So I've been serving on the local alcohol drug planning commission for around six years, I think. Um, and there has been a collective change in direction as far as our group goes um, in targeting um, addictions in without, within Marion County as well as mental health issues, um, along with the change of the um, health department with a new name. I think they're in the process of changing their name. So we think it would be really important um, to have a liaison between Public Safety Council and the local alcohol drug planning commission um, ironically the time of the meeting is super helpful as my daughter is leaving for college in the fall and i'm going through a little moment of oh boy <laughs> what am i going to do now and so i don't want to um, keep the restaurant open past two <laughs> so um, uh, they elected me and it sounded like a really good fit for the time being, as well as um, a real passion for um, uh, helping people that still struggle with addiction within our county. Thank you. And Commissioner Cameron, co-chairs Public Safety Council, anything you'd like yeah. to ask? Yeah, Carrie, Carrie I, um, first of all, I wanna thank you for uh, all you do in the community out in Staten and, and beyond and uh, the good food that we get to have <laughs> once a month out there. I think that's the priority, right? As right. a fellow restaurant tour. Gotta have the bacon. <laughs> yeah, as a, as a fellow restaurant tour, I appreciate how hard it is and uh, the opportunities you give employees to uh, stand on their feet and, and get Thank going. You. And you'll be a great addition. Um, and I'm trying to keep up with uh, Chair Carlson on the Public Safety Coordinating Council this year, and I cannot do it. So you're going to have to help me next year when she's retired and More than we're in it together. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Thank you. Questions? No, I wanted to find something to give her some grief about, but there's, there's <laughs> nothing. It's just all good. She keeps showing up in the state and area and others uh, doing good things. I see a list of the Harvest Festival Committee head, Foothills Church, St. Joseph. Shelter, state and boosters, but I've seen you everywhere you're involved and uh, we're happy that you pointed our way. Thank you, Sam. And the Thanksgiving celebration that involves our uh, law enforcement folks too, yes. from the sheriff's office. Couldn't so. do it without all of them for sure. Um, 
the numbers are just crawling. I think last year we served well over 1,500 people. So um, it's a, a great community event for all people to come to. And that's the focus is to share, to share yourself with someone that you probably would never share yourself with. So we, we really enjoy it. So the last thing I would add before we make a motion and take a vote is that uh, you were, your application was presented to the Public Safety Coordinating Council at our recent meeting, and the council unanimously endorsed uh, your uh, membership to the Board of Commissioners for us. So. Thank you, Janet. Yeah. So it was... Yeah, Madam Chair, I'll move that we approve an order appointing Carrie Simmons to the Marion County uh, Public Safety Coordinating Council with, a, council with a term ending July 31st, 2021. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve Carrie Sessoms to the Public Safety <coughs> Council. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 And you are approved. Thank Thanks you so much. Thank we'll you. see you at the next meeting. Thanks for coming in. Item number two. This is to consider approval in order recommending denial of six Oregon Liquor Control Commission liquor license renewals. So last week, if people were paying attention, we actually approved a whole roster of uh, liquor licenses. I think it was under consent. And uh, six of them had letters attached to them saying that the Board of Commissioners was approving them because we had no other recourse. However, these uh, are significantly behind in their property taxes. And I think it even listed the amounts by which they were behind in their property taxes. Um, we had a discussion about this on Monday and uh, determined that actually we did have recourse to be able to not only send the letter with the delinquent property taxes, but also to recommend denial rather than approval along with that letter. So we're ha this is a do-over. Uh, so we're bringing these six back and uh, there's uh, now an order to recommend denial. So any discussion on that before we... I pretty well covered it. Yep. Okay, so we're looking for a motion. Okay, I would, Madam Chair, I'd make a motion that we do approve the order that recommends denial of six Oregon Liquor Control Commission liquor license renewals. Should I name them or? Uh, do I don't know that we need to you name can, them in the motion. You can just say listed on Exhibit A. Listed on Exhibit A. I'll second the motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All right, that one is approved. So now for the good stuff. Uh, this is under community services. Consider approval of a proclamation designating the month of April as Child Abuse Prevention Month in Marion County. And we have a whole host oh, of people goodness. here. Tamara Getch, Patrice Altenhofen, Allison Kelly, Shani Starr, Julie Hilty, Sue Bloom, Mary Grimm, Pete Teller and the youth from Leslie Middle School. So, and it looks like and Sheriff, Sheriff and Mike. District Attorney are here. Got a whole lot of people. So let's bring everybody up front. <coughs> Good morning. Good morning, Commissioners. I'm Tamara Gedge, Director of Community Services, and happy to be joined by such great partners in our community uh, in recognition of a community effort that's been going on for years around the need for us to uh, do what our community does best and make a difference for kids and families uh, by uh, raising up and bringing attention to the, the importance of prevention of child abuse. I'm joined by, as I said, by a lot of great partners today, and then rather than going, uh, introducing them, I'll have them introduce themselves as they uh, have a uh, part in today's presentation. This year's campaign is uh, focusing on uh, prevention, and uh, you should have all found a blue pinwheel at your uh, computers this morning and pinwheel ribbons stickers are all part of the symbolism that we are trying to um, spread throughout the county this year to help raise that awareness um, additionally um, as has been a tradition in this community we're going to be having the blue ribbon tree which will be located at the Capitol 
Uh, I think ribbons will be going up shortly within a week or so and it will be ready for an event that we'll talk about in a few minutes. Uh, the ribbons on those trees represent uh, the number of children impacted um, by abuse in Oregon. A uh, little so somber reminder, but it really does drive us to um, make a difference for our kids uh, in Marion County. I want to uh, personally thank uh, one of my staff members, uh, Mary Graham, who unfortunately uh, was not able to join us today. Uh, but she has done a lot of great work behind the scenes, working on the planning committee. Um, but she was also uh, deeply supported by Julie Hilty uh, from Family Building Blocks, who uh, together they're a dynamite team and have been doing some great work over the last several months. This committee really wants to encourage each and every one of our community members to do its part and knowing that um, each of us has a role to play in preventing child abuse. And whether that is uh, being a neighbor that a child could come home to, being um, home with your own children, um, participating on a board within the community for those services that are making a difference for those kids and families in our community, or whatever your role is in the community. Um, we just ask you to do your part, um, really be thoughtful about it in the next uh, 30, 40 days, um, and be thinking about what you can do to make a difference. And so we're going to use this mic and ask each and every one of you to speak into that as we walk through our presentation this morning. Good morning. My name is Patrice Altenhoffen, and I'm the Executive Director of Family Building Blocks. We operate relief nurseries, helping families, and early head start in Marion and Polk counties. Thank you so much for uh, your time today. Family Building Box mission is prevention. It is keeping children safe and families together. Last year, we served over 750 families and 1,300 children. We're very proud of our work, but we know there is so much more to do. The sobering facts in Oregon and in Marion County are that there were almost 12,000 confirmed victims of child abuse and neglect in Oregon in 2016, and almost 1,300 victims of child abuse and neglect in Marion County in that year. The total number of incidents in Marion County actually increased by 6.5% from 2015 to 2016, and neglect and the threat of harm continue to be the greatest type of child abuse in our county. 587 and 491 respectively. Almost half of these victims are under the age of six. Um, this age of children that continues to be our most vulnerable population. It's really, really heartbreaking. And out of all the children um, abused and neglected in Oregon, 93.5% of the victims were uh, of the abuse was perpetrated by a family member or someone living in the child's home. And this reminds us that all families need support and working with families is one of our county's most important investments. Our campaign incorporates a comprehensive approach geared to supporting families and caretakers. As a group, we believe that every parent wants what's best for their child and that often parent, parents face overwhelming life circumstances that make it very hard to provide adequate care to their children. So we wrap around parents as a community to stop what is often an intergenerational cycle of abuse and neglect. Good morning, commissioners. My name is Walt Beckloff, and I'm, I have the privilege to serve as the district attorney of Marion County. Our um, message here simply is to report any suspicion or disclosure of physical abuse or sexual abuse. And oftentimes that's neglect of the little kiddos that just aren't getting the care that they need. You want to report that. This statute, this law, gives us all an amazing opportunity to be a champion for kids right on the front line. And so any, any citizen, any community member that has reasonable cause to believe that a child has been abused or neglected should call the hotline. I put it in my phone. Everyone get out their smartphone at one point or another and put 
3-6704. Did I get the number right? Yeah. That's the number for Marion County Child Abuse Reporting, and that allows you to have that easy and make that call, because when you do suspect abuse, you, you need to report it immediately to the Department of Human Services or law enforcement. And if it's not during work hours, you dial 911. So that's our message. Be a champion for kids. Good morning, Commissioners. Jason Myers, Sheriff. Um, my part of this is that all of us have a role. Um, there's a saying that it takes a village to raise a child. I would submit it takes a village to protect a child. All of us have a role in this. All of us have to take action. All of us must protect the most vulnerable in our community. That is our children. Good morning, Commissioners. My name is Shani Starr. I'm Executive Director of CASA of Marion County. Uh, I'm so excited uh, to have our uh, organization uh, be able to be at the table. Uh, just under two years ago, we were only serving 10% of the kids in care, and we're closing in on serving, um, increasing that to 50% of our kids in care. So um, proud of our work as well. Um, the important thing, I think, for all of our organizations uh, that are represented in part of the child abuse prevention uh, planning team is that we all need volunteers. And um, our families need help every step of the way. Uh, we need volunteers to help with the prevention services with family building blocks. We need volunteers uh, to help uh, with the kiddos and the families um, when they unfortunately need to be seen at Liberty House and uh, CASA as well. Uh, once they are um, in foster care, we need those volunteers. Um, Boys and Girls Club as well. Uh, we need people to be with our kiddos um, after school. So, um, and and during during the days when they're at the clubs. So there's an opportunity for all of us uh, to get involved. And I would encourage um, all of our community members to reach out and ask how they can help. Thank you. Good morning, commissioners. My name is Allison Kelly, and I serve as the chief executive officer for Liberty House, which is the community assessment center serving Marion. Um, and so I think the easiest way to explain what Liberty House's role is is to think about what happens next after someone makes that report that the district attorney talked about. Um, that report goes to um, the screening unit at Department of Human Services and they are very, very experienced at what they do and then they make assignments and each local community has a multidisciplinary team. And I am grateful to say we have such dedicated and experienced people both in all of our law enforcement agencies and DHS, and they work together, and they work together with the Ray House and often at the Ray House to help that process of responding be easier for the family. And then we provide the medical assessment. We have trained forensic interviewers who can listen to a child and then give that child the opportunity to explain what's happening to them. So that's really important. And what we want to stress here is how important it is for people just to become more educated and more aware about the topic in all of its forms. Um, one thing, in a meeting with many of our detectives early this year, we went around the room and we said, what do we want to see different this year, next year, than it's not happening this year? And every single detective in the room said, I wish we could get the word out how devastating it is when children send online images of themselves that someone else has asked them to send. Those are permanent. And when they, when they sex and send naked pictures of themselves, and that's a really important message that we want to get out. That's part of it. Somebody likely asked that child to do that. Um, so cyber safety and online activity is at the top of the list of getting educated about ways. And I have a very good friend who works in law enforcement who told the story of when his teens were starting to get involved in kind of the bullying thing that was ramping up and escalating online. And he noticed it and sat them down, and it was a teachable moment say, you know, that's not what we want to do as a family. Think about how that child is going to feel if you post that negative thing online about them. So it's very much related to bullying, and that's very much related to youth suicide. We had eight of those in our county last year, youth suicide. So it's all connected. Um, so that's that piece. In Liberty House, during the month of April, Child Abuse Prevention Month, we'll be offering two trainings. One on Thursday, April 5th, from 9 to noon, 
and one on, um, I think it's Monday, April 23rd from 5 to 8 p.m. and that's called Darkness to Light, Stewards of Children. And that's a way of becoming more aware of child sexual abuse and how to recognize the signs, how to protect your children. Very important, I would encourage everybody who's able, who haven't, hasn't been to that training to go. I can't tell you how many parents I've talked with who were just heartbroken that something was happening to their child and they, it was right under their noses and they never knew. And, and you know, you kind of can't unring those bells, but you can get help in therapy, which is another thing that we do. So with that, um, we do know that there are a number of cases of neglect in Marion County. And for people who want to learn a little bit more about what neglect is, just think in terms of the parent or caregiver's responsibility to meet the physical safety needs, clothing needs, food needs, and medical needs of their child. There's a very good resource book on the DHS website that says what you can do about child abuse and some good language in that book that helps people understand um, the responsibilities of parents. Um, these cases, and really all cases in general, are rising. You heard Patrice say that the number is rising. I understood recently from one of our leaders at DHS that also the calls to the hotline in our county have jumped. So five years ago, um, the calls to the hotline were about 8,500 a year in Marion Fall counties. Last year, my understanding is that there were 10,500 calls in Marion County alone. So um, it's important that we lean in and try to get some good resources. So, and that's where the entire community can come into play. Good morning, my name is Pete Teller counselor here in Salem at Leslie Middle School and from the screen you see that it lets us know that we should tell a friend or a trusted adult that's because we don't want anyone to suffer in silence in schools we find ourselves generally on the front line of being involved with our youth and children from the day they enter the school buildings and I'd like to let you know a little bit from what Allison just shared of something that we've just introduced in the school system this year for the very first time. I don't know if you've had a chance to be introduced or be informed about Safe Oregon, but Safe Oregon is coordinated through the Oregon State Police, and it's a tip line, an anonymous tip line for students um, to be able to report anonymously bullying, violence, drugs, or harm that they see to anyone or that they hear about at school. They can do that online, by email, through calling or texting, and there's also an app that you can download from iTunes or Google Play. This is an important step in our district in regards to preventing child abuse. It's not to replace the hotline, but this is especially designed to help with bullying reduction in our schools and by keeping children safe, safe in that way. So again, no one should suffer in silence. We're trying to improve the avenues that we have of being able to have people report what needs to get told to the adults. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Sue Bloom. I'm the Executive Director of the Boys and Girls Clubs of Salem, Marion, and Fulton County. Our role is to serve youth throughout our community ages 6 through 18, particularly those who need us most. So this is very relevant for there we our go, yeah. organization. Thank you. So prevention is the key, and truly it takes all of us to support our children and our families um, to help prevent child abuse. And you'll see on possibly the next slide that there is a link to resources. Um, there is a link to resources, um, and you can reach it from the county page uh, for parentsforthefuture.org, and it provides a wide range of resources and supports and uh, education for us as citizens of our community. So you've been hearing from um, great partners in our community that provide service, serve the communities in various ways. However, there's a way for us all to do our part, not only in our homes, but show our collective energy and support behind this uh, initiative of preventing child abuse in our community. Uh, Friday, April 6th, the blue ribbon tree that I mentioned that will be at the Capitol um, will also be the backdrop for this event. Uh, it's going to start at 8.30 in the morning uh, with uh, Chamber of Commerce greeters downstairs at the Capitol. And then at 10 o'clock, we'll be convening outside of the Capitol in front of the Blue Ribbon Tree. Um, not only do we invite uh, 
all of you to be there with us. We also invite any community member that is available at 10 a.m. or even 8.30 in the morning to join us for greeters um, to join us at the Capitol. Um, I think showing our presence there will be an important symbolism to those who've been victims uh, of child abuse, uh, who have, uh, who know others that have been abused, um, and to know that there is uh, a community full of support and services uh, that are really geared to help people mitigate those and find healing in ways that matter in their lives, uh, not only today, but in the future. And at this time, I'd like to call up the peer helpers from Leslie Middle School. And if we could have them line up over here by the front door, a universal way in which we can all prevent child abuse and neglect is by taking the hands and words are not for hurting pledge. And in just a moment, once we get organized here, we're going to leave all of you in doing just that this morning. Yeah, Pete, I'm not sure if they could, I'm not sure if they're, are, are the cameras set up to go over there? Won't you ask? You can get them? Okay, then fine, stay where you are. <laughs> So at this time, we'll start in Spanish by saying the hands and words are not for hurting flesh, so please repeat after Esmeralda as she leads us in Spanish. Please raise your right hand. No usaré mis manos o palabras para lastimar a otros o a mí mismos. Can you say that with two other words? No usaré. No, isa, no, no usaré, usaré mis manos, mis manos o, palabras, o, o mis palabras para lastimar, para lastimar a otros, a otros o, a mí mismo. o a mí mismo. Gosh. Just keep your right hand up and join me in Spanish. I will not use my hands or my words for hurting myself. For hurting myself or others. others. So I know he wants to show you, but Commissioner Cameron wears a wristband daily. But why do you say mean things to me in spite of that? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually they're just um, words of love. <laughs> You know that. You know yeah, that's right. just how we express our fun things with each other. It's interesting. May I? Yeah. Sure? Why don't we do a comment? Are you? The one more. Oh, one more. Okay. okay, Julie. I just wanted to obviously wrap up, but I wanted to mention that I feel like we have something rare and a treasure here in the county, in the city, that over 20 nonprofits have gathered together, city officials and government, to really focus on Child Abuse Prevention Month. This year, too, we've had the most proclamations that we're going to have in the county, which is really exciting. Um, city of Staten, City of Sublimity, Almsville, Woodburn, and the City of Salem City Council will also be proclaiming April's Child Abuse Prevention Month. Um, I need to give a shout out, obviously, to Salem Electric. It's a really big deal that they're donating all of their hours to put the ribbons up. Um, and that is really crucial to the iconic blue ribbon tree and then also taking them down. Um, and then I just want to end with, um, we had an opportunity to um, be placing ads in the chariot buses this year, and I really just want to remind everyone that parenting is hard, parenting is messy, but it's better with support, and we're all here to help. And this is a list of all of the nonprofits that have really gathered around this um, this month and this proclamation and this um, the interest in making sure that we're really reaching out to parents and we're really reaching out to city um, and residents as they think about how they can support this um, month. This month's theme. So, thank you very much for your guys' time. Great, thank you, Commissioner. Oh. I mean, I'm sure since uh, my colleague commented on the bracelet I have, it's interesting that I think I have probably four or five of these up in my office still. Maybe, maybe I need another supply. But as I try, I, you know, I go on vacations once in a while, and. Uh, in Indonesia, I met a young man on an island. He's got one of these now because he wanted my bracelet. Um, and then just this last year, uh, 
a gentleman was walking down the beach in Placentia, Belize, selling uh, cashews from Honduras. And we were talking, you know, I, I love to talk to people from other places. And he saw my bracelet and he said, what is that? And I explained to him and gave him the bracelet. So I was without one for that week. But when I got back, I got in my drawer and put it back on, put another one back on. So there's some of these not only here in Oregon and I know around the United States, but in other countries. And you never know um, how that may make a difference in somebody's life um, down the road when you, when you can just talk to one person about it. Um, but it's pretty cool. Yeah, I have been, I'm glad you noticed that. You said some kind things to me today. That's pretty nice. Just the way I am. Just the way you are. <laughs> yeah. Tell this. Well, I do. And Julie was kind of getting at it. Uh, what a magnificent team we have gathered from all different areas to, to try to make it better here. But I ask a question annually. And I'm get ready, Walt. I'm coming your way, and, yeah. and, and you'll give me the same answer. And I'm going to take some of it away. And it's always about our things getting better. Um, but you'll say the numbers are up because more people are aware that you've educated more people, or people understand what's going on, and they do report it. Allison, I heard a number of calls up, you know, 25 uh, percent from last year. That doesn't say to me that it's getting better. Unless, well, you're right, it just means people know. So, any comment? Is it getting better? Yeah, uh, Madam Chair, Commissioner Brentano, I, I appreciate you coming at me every year with this question. I really do. Let me tell you what is getting better. Our team is getting better. We're getting better uh, at addressing the, 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 the gravity of the problem that our communities face across this nation. Uh, we're, uh, we're teaming up in the moment to respond to a child in need, and we're getting them on that path that Tammy described to healing much sooner. And so I feel our team, just physically here today, you've got this uh, uh, front line, we're literally in front of the Board of Commissioners that is dedicated to this. So I think, I think that's the good news, is every year I come back, I I can tell you, I feel so much better about uh, reaching those little ones. You're right, though. I, I think we, we haven't really figured out the, the depth of this problem yet. And this awareness campaign, the reporting statute, all of these critical elements are uh, really uh, kind of unfolding the scope of the problem. And, and the, we haven't reached all the numbers yet. We know the disclosures. It's underdisclosed. Um, it's um, it's complex. It impacts different geographies of our communities differently, and so um, that's the tough part, um, Commissioner. And uh, until I think we've hit the we hit the bottom of that, uh, I think that the answer may be the same. I know my team is probably just all kind of leaning in and wanting to kind of share or build upon that, but I think I think that's part of it. So I have so many thoughts, and I have just realized this is my 16th proclamation, and the last one I'll be doing as a county commissioner. I want to thank all of you for being here, for all of the work that you do. As I'm looking across you all and thinking about where you touch families, uh, we're talking about child abuse prevention, and I look at Walt, your folks are not, you're on the end when you're finding out the cases and working on them, so the abuse has already happened. Allison, you're there to do those exams and to restore that family and to help. But again, the deed has already been done and we're looking at that. I look at family building blocks. Healthy Start is one example of what we tried to do to get on that prevention end. So when a mom has that first baby, she's open to information and perhaps will we'll, uh, be willing to have people support her. And uh, the dad too, obviously dads are, are critical in this. Pete, you bring your kids every year, and it's so amazing. I mean, you're on the front lines, too, and this age of middle school is so pivotal in terms of where kids are at, what they're experiencing, uh, what, what direction they're going to go in terms of, of moving towards adulthood and help, help, helping them to understand that it's important to share if something happens and important to, to be that trusted friend. 
uh, not just to tell a trusted friend, but to be that trusted friend is so critical. So thank you for what you do. Boys and Girls Club, again, right on the front lines of helping kids every day. And then Shaney, your CASAs are there, and they do, I have so many stories of CASAs that not only work on that case for the six months or a year, or however long those cases take, but continue to mentor those kids that they have been connected with and help move them back into a family that's gonna, so they don't experience it again, and that is really important as well. When I think about the dynamics of why people would abuse their child, I mean, it's just basically, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, I can't, I, I guess unfathomable, that's the word I'm looking for about why anyone would abuse their child. And yet, as you're saying, Julie, parenting is messy, families are under stress, and I cannot say with a clear conscience that I went through raising three kids without screaming at them many more times than once. Uh, when you're at the end of your rope, it's, it's difficult when you're under stress to uh, control those tempers and to have the strategies to be able to deal with kids um, in a way that is, makes, is positive and uh, helps everyone move forward. Oftentimes, I think, Alcohol and drugs are involved in the abuse that we see. And when people are under the spell of addiction and, and end up not being themselves, and again, I don't think there's any excuse. I'm not making excuses for people. There's no excuse for abusing a child. But certainly there are dynamics and things that we understand that contribute to that. Um, mental health issues, and we have nonprofits in the county working on that as well. And then we've seen this ballooning increase of homelessness in our community, and, and we have high levels of poverty in our community. And I've always said, because my dad um, and mom grew up in the Depression, they lived in severe poverty. That's what I can't even imagine. And they were not abused, and they did not abuse us as a result of that. I don't think poverty is an excuse or a cause, but certainly, the neglect part of it becomes difficult for people when they're living in a car or not able to provide food the next day to kind of under, or just looking to how they get from day to day to be able to understand then how they can take care of their children in that environment. So yes, I think reporting is really important, but I think drilling down to figure out how we stop that event from happening in the first place is where I'd really like to see us be with all the great services that we have after the fact uh, I don't think we have enough <laughs> before the fact, and, I, and I'd like to see more of that. The Safe Oregon, we did have a presentation by the state police at our Public Safety Council, and thank you for bringing that forward. One of the questions I had is, when we had that presentation, is it's only as good as then what the people that receive the call and get the information do with it um, afterwards. And so I'm really hopeful that Salem-Kaiser is taking those uh, calls in and, and acting upon them and making sure that, that uh, that they're followed up on and, and that things happen because of it. And then the last comment that I would make is that the hands and words are not for hurting pledge. I just love that pledge. And Kelly comes every year and, and you come with her in October, I think it is, is the month that we do that. And Ann came over uh, and visited with me, I think a month or so ago, and was really interested. And I actually gave her a, a number of names and phone numbers, and she may have been in touch with you, uh, about how she could get this, uh, you know, Leslie Middle School has been doing this forever, and, and my son, my, my baby boy, uh, Christian, he's 32, <laughs> uh, and he went to the Elsinore Theater when, I can't remember what grade he was in, might have been in the, I can't remember what year it was, probably, it was in the 90s. I still, I, we're moving, and I found the purple gloves in a drawer. Uh, I've got them at home that he wore when he was at the Elsinore, and everybody did the hands and words are not for hurting. And it, there's still little remnants of it in our community, but we do that proclamation every year, so we kind of talk the talk, but we're not really walking the walk as a community with that as much anymore, uh, present company excluded, and, and your youth. But the, you know, So uh, we, we're uh, looking at, and uh, Ashley Marshall, who is working as a policy analyst, has contacted Ann about how with these new buildings that we have, because I know we have one in the, in the uh, transition center, right? That, uh, but maybe we could have some of those, uh, what do they call them? Placards or uh, the, Fingers. yeah, the, they're not posters, they're big cardboard things that come up. We could have some of those maybe in our health building and our public safety buildings and our juvenile buildings and 
and also get some of the, the information out in a way that we're doing that, reminded of that more every year. And she's got, uh, Anne had some ideas of what some other counties have done. Klamath County, I guess, has really jumped in and done some great work with that. So hopefully when you come in October, we'll have a report about uh, what Marion County's doing to more intentionally keep that hands and words more than just a once a year proclamation, but something that we do every day. So I've gone on way too long, but again, I just wanna thank you all uh, for what you do and uh, for being here so that we can uh, have this proclamation today. Yes. I'm not really making an offer because John will get nervous, but I think you know you have a very sympathetic board here and probably never a more sympathetic commissioner for eight months. So if you can think of something that helps that the county can do, we'll certainly take a look at it. Yeah. Thank you. So, so Madam, Ch Madam Chair, I'll move that we approve a proclamation designating the month of April as Child Abuse Prevention Month in Marion County. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the proclamation. All in favor say aye. 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 And we will read the proclamation and let's start. Uh, Commissioner Cameron, would you like to start? Sure. Before the Board of Commissioners of Marion County, Oregon, in the matter of proclaiming April Child Abuse Prevention Month, the matter came before the Marion County Board of Commissioners at its regular scheduled meeting at March 21st, 2018 to proclaim April as Child Abuse Prevention Month. And whereas every child deserves to live in a safe, loving, and caring family environment and whereas in 2016 there were 11,843 reported victims of child abuse and the and neglect in Oregon of those reported cases, 1,255 were victims in Marion County. And whereas we endeavor to join together as <clears throat> individuals, organizations, and government agencies to prevent child abuse in our county by providing opportunities to educate, train, and support caregivers by raising awareness of relevant topics, including child development, basic care skills, discipline strategies, and goal setting for our parents and Whereas by strengthening families and providing safe, stable, and nurturing environments that are free from violence, abuse, and neglect, opportunities are created for children's optimal growth and success, ensuring a secure future for our communities where the needs of children are a priority and the needs of families are met. Now therefore, the Marion County Board of Commissioners asks everyone to join together in protecting our children and does hereby proclaim April 2018 as Child okay. Abuse Prevention Month. Our proclamation and we will see you at the Capitol. Thank you very much for all your support. Okay. Thank you. And we're signing the proclamation. Tammy, is there, we have a couple uh, kind of ceremonial ones. Do you, did you want? Tammy, did you want to take the proclamation? Sure. Fortunately, this year, I, everyone's here. I remember when they blew it up and it said, not present at me. <laughs> That's not so. good. <laughs> okay, I think we're going to give her one of them, and we're going to keep the rest for the record, right? There you go. Very much. Thank you. Let's hand that back to Christy. All right. <clears throat> Boy, Alan, now you get, where are you? Alan Haley? <laughs> right there you there. are, Follow you're already that. up there, my goodness. Follow that, Alan. All right, yeah, that's, okay. Consider adoption of an ordinance ratifying the creation of the Oregon Association of County Engineers and Surveyors, OASIS, Alan Haley. Thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioners, uh, Alan Haley, Public Works. Um, before you is an ordinance that's uh, looking to do and ratify the OASIS group, which is, uh, a group that are, is a statewide uh, organization of our uh, engineers and surveyors. It came to you before as an IGA, um, and it came to you because it was recognized that um, through some financial accounting that OASIS didn't actually have any standing. Um, after years and years of, of being an organization, uh, they are now a, <clears throat> were helped by the Association of Oregon Counties. They AOC manages our assets, uh, the group's assets, and 
<clears throat> through a, a banking issue, we came across the fact that um, AOC actually needed to have more standing um, uh, to be able to assist the OASIS group. So in 2016, you approved an IGA um, recognizing that uh, OASIS would be a part of AOC. Uh, at that time, though, we failed to bring forward or forgot um, an ordinance <coughs> which actually, uh, per ORS, is needed to actually ratify the creation of the group. So today, in front of you, is the ordinance um, which uh, ratifies the OASIS as a group uh, underneath and inside the Association of Oregon Counties. A little bit complicated, but um, uh, this, will, this formalizes the actions that you took in 2016. All right. Questions or comments? Oh, not at all. Madam Chair, I'd make a motion that we adopt the ordinance that ratifies the creation of Oregon Association of County Engineers and Surveyors. I'll second the motion. All right, we have a motion and a second to adopt the ordinance. And we're adopting it by emergency procedure, correct? Yes, yeah, it actually says that on the, yeah. It? So both of them are by emergency procedure. So that's procedure. the motion then. All right. Otherwise, we can't adopt it today. We have to do a first reading. All right, so uh, so if we're do doing it by emergency, then I think we need to change the motion of the chair read, okay. the, read it by title only. I'll make that motion okay. that we read the ordinance by title only twice, have the chair do that. And I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second that the chair read the ordinance by title only twice. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All right. So I will read it by title only twice. An ordinance creating an intergovernmental entity by intergovernmental agreement known as the Oregon Association of County Engineers and Surveyors, or OASIS, and declaring an emergency. And the second time, an ordinance creating an intergovernmental entity by intergovernmental agreement known as the Oregon <laughs> Association of County Engineers and Surveyors, or OASIS, and declaring an emergency. So, Madam Chair, now I would like to make a motion that adopts the ordinance ratifying the creation of Oregon Association of County Engineers and Surveyors. I'll second the motion. All right, we have a motion and a second to adopt the ordinance. All in favor say aye. 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 And it is adopted. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioners. <laughs> All right, last item also under Public Works, and Joe Fenimore is here for that one. It's to consider adoption of an administrative ordinance for Legislative Amendment 17-002 regarding amendments to the Marion County Code, Title 17 Rural Zone Code. And this is also going to be by emergency procedure. Joe. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, for the record, Joe Fenimore. This item before you today is to consider adoption of an administrative ordinance amending the Rural Zone Code by emergency procedure. As you know, in state, under state law, in administrative rules, the county has the options of whether or not to allow commercial solar farms to be placed in farm zones. Um, if a county chooses to allow these, state statutes require them to be a conditional use, and also administrative rules contain minimum standards that must be met. Um, in 2011, Marion County, the current Marion County Zone Code was updated to allow these facilities as a conditional use, and the standards were, state standards were adopted into the Zone Code. In 2015, the county began receiving conditional use applications for these facilities. In the farm zone, that some individuals and organizations contacted the county with concerns about allowing these on the higher value farm soils. Based on these concerns, on January 31st, the board adopted a resolution to consider amending the zone code to adopt additional standards and criteria to apply in high value farm, in the farm zones on high value farm soils. Um, a public hearing was scheduled for March 14th. Um, at that hearing, the board heard testimony on the proposed amendments, and after considering the planning division file, all the arguments and testimony of the parties, the board decided to repeal the provisions in the code to allow these solar facilities at this time. Um, they directed staff to work with the planning commission to gather stakeholders from both sides to come up with proposals that in the future may be able to allow these facilities in the farm zones but still protect the high value farm soils. Um, once again, these are just the commercial, large commercial farms. These don't apply to the small residential ones you see on houses or that some farms have to help supplement their, the power they're using. Um, the ordinance repeal and the provisions in the EFU and SA zone have been prepared. is now set for adoption by emergency procedure. 
The board has the option of adopting the ordinance before you. <coughs> direct staff to modify the ordinance or choose not to adopt the ordinance at this time. Staff recommends the board adopt the ordinance before you by emergency procedure by reading it by title twice. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Yes. Oh, Madam yes. Chair, if I could just some comments after reading that I'm anti-business and anti-solar arrays, just a little bit of a comment. I'm not. I'm all for it. All I want to do is protect Marion County's most valuable farmland and try to get these sited into places that are more appropriate. Um, that's the issue. And that's all I wanted to say. I thought everything I read was true. Uh, um, no, see, I, look at your wristband. Right. <laughs> no, uh, I just want to clarify, Joe, that, uh, for example, I went up to, I think it's George Packing, the hazelnut uh, processing right at the north end of Marion County up there. They have this solar array right next to their processing plant. This would not prevent uh, a processor from doing that right there on their processing, et cetera, the n normal um, business operations like that, correct? Correct. This applies to, to facilities that are a, a commercial power generating facility. So they're actually generating power just to sell on the, on the market. Yeah. So I'm, I'm with the commissioner, I, we want to promote this in, in really good ways, and uh, I think we just need to make sure that we're doing it right. And I, I appreciate the, the commissioner's uh, motion last week to, um, to stop it and say, let's take a time out and figure out how to do this. And that's what this is all about. And we really want to encourage you to make sure that if you need some help bringing people together or whatever, just I, I want to be there to make sure, because I know it's a big job for you. All right, so thank you. And I'll just add my two cents worth. We heard from a lot of people last week. I was amazed at how many people came. And uh, a lot of passionate people on both sides of the issue. Uh, certainly people concerned from a business perspective, people concerned from an agriculture perspective. Uh, and so there were a lot of valid things that were said. I do think it's important for us to keep perspective on this. And I think that's really what Commissioner Brentano was alluding to in his comments. That's how I took them anyway. And that is that if we were to cover every inch of farm ground in Marion County with solar panels, I, don't, I think it would still be an nth of a percent of our total ability to provide electrical power. I mean, and so again, this is, I mean, this is being promoted now. There's certain folks that believe that this is cleaner energy, and we've heard that in the, in, than other energy. I want to make sure that, and I think as commissioners we do this, that there's a balance there where we understand where this fits in and why we're looking at not necessarily allowing these everywhere, uh, just because there are other ways that energy is created that aren't as politically acceptable these days, but certainly have a much higher proportion and potential uh, hydro being one, I'll just put that one out there, <laughs> right? Uh, and uh, and so I just don't want, you know, we're not just going to jump on the solar bandwagon and say that that's the answer to everything. There's got to be a portfolio of uh, strategies for us to get to our energy needs. And I'm certainly uh, a believer in conserving energy, and I'm certainly a believer in trying to make sure that we look at all of our different options, but um, I'm not just going to put everything by the wayside to make this possible. And I think the time out that we're doing is a good thing. And, and uh, Commissioner's comment about, uh, I think it's when we were, I can't remember who we were talking to, but the idea that we would have had the first set of standards and then ha have another set of standards while we were trying to figure out the third set of standards would have been way confusing for people. So this is, I think, a much better solution. And we said all applicable ordinances, and it looks like we have three sections here with a lot of lines crossed out. So uh, hopefully this will get the job done. Madam Chair, I'll, uh, if that's all right, I'll move that uh, the board uh, adopt this ordinance by emergency procedure and that the chair read by title only twice. I'll second it. All right, we have a motion and a second that the chair read the ordinance by Title only twice. All in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> so it's this, this one's a little easier to read than the last one. <laughs> in the matter of an ordinance amending Marion County Code, Title 17, Rural Zone Code, provisions and declaring an emergency. And again, in the matter of an ordinance amending Marion County Code, Title 17, Rural Zone Code, 
provisions and declaring an emergency. And Madam Chair, I'll move that we uh, adopt an administrative ordinance um, uh, for legislative amendment LA 17002 regarding amendments to the Marion County Code Title 17. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the ordinance. Is there any further discussion? Everybody's made all their comments? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 All right, that's approved. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that concludes our business today. There are no public hearings. I'll go ahead and read our Wednesday to Wednesday calendar. These are meetings where two or three commissioners will be present between March 21st today and March 28th, 2018. So we're just concluding our board session here at the Senator Hearing Room on March 21st. We will be leaving shortly to go to a county community forum with the state and Rotary. That will be held at the Sandy M Golf Club, 8724 Golf Club Road, Southeast in Almsville. Then tomorrow, Thursday, March 22nd at 1.30 is the Marion County Justice Reinvestment Council quarterly meeting. That will be held in the Commissioner's Boardroom here at Courthouse Square on the fifth floor. That will be followed at three o'clock by a Law Enforcement Assisted Diversion Work Group, also held in the Commissioner's Boardroom here at Courthouse Square. And then from four to six is a retirement reception for Mayor Chuck Bennett. Uh, who is, uh, has been for many years employed with COSA, the Confederation of Oregon School Administrators. That reception will be over at their offices at 707 13th Street Southeast, Suite 100 in Salem. Monday, March 26th at 8.30 in the morning is our weekly calendar review. That's in the Silverton Conference Room at Courthouse Square here in Salem. Followed at 9 a.m. with management updates, same place. Followed at 11 a.m. by a Board of Commissioners Chief Administrative Officer with executive sessions noticed if needed, pursuant to all the various uh, ORSs 1926622A, B, D, F, H, and I. Uh, that will begin immediately following management update if uh, management update ends before 11, and it will be held in the Silverton Conference Room at Courthouse Square. Tuesday, March 27th at 8.30 is Community Corrections Board, Silverton Conference Room, Courthouse Square, followed by a work session, also in the Silverton Conference Room on the tax exemptions programs, rural enterprise and brownfield sites. At noon on March 27th is the Public Safety Coordinating Council Steering Committee in the Silverton Conference Room. And then a week from today, March 28th at 9 a.m., we're back in the Senator Hearing Room for a regular Wednesday board session. Uh, 1115 to one is the City of Salem State of the City Address at the Salem Convention Center. I guess we're all going to that. Uh, 200 Commercial Street in Salem. And then finally, on Wednesday, March 28th at 3.30 is an executive session pursuant to ORS 192-662-H, I think that's bargaining, uh, in the Silverton Conference Room, fifth floor here in Salem. So that's a little bit more than we usually have on the calendar, it seems like, but busy weeks lately, so. So we're leaving for my state and Rotary Club. We are? Yes. And I'm, I'm always afraid I just tell them the same thing. So I was thinking, well, you don't want I, to talk about garbage this year? No, they're tired <laughs> of it. But what I, what I actually had, wish we could have done, I thought about it. If, even just showing a video of that group that uh -huh. we just had and say, here's the kind of things we care about, if that wouldn't right. have been more effective than me talking about garbage. Well, it's on Facebook Live. You know, you can just go, you could probably well, like Well, tell them to look at it. Yeah. Okay, good idea. Our state of the county speech? No. No, the one we just did here, the, the uh, Child Abuse Prevention oh. Proclamation. Could just rewind it to that. Say, so watch this. This is yeah. what we care about. Yeah. Well, you'll have to think about what I. You know, you can talk about anything you want to. You don't have to talk about garbage. So. They've heard it for a long time now. Yeah, I got it. Why don't you talk about your uh, the concerns that you have over the scats stuff? Have they heard about that a lot too? Do you like it when I look like a fanatic? But I am. Huh. All right, I, I will. I will. Because I'm, I'm not wearing a bracelet. Sorry, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> you. Yeah. You got me started because this is where we tell them you can't drive into Salem anymore. That's right, exactly yeah, there you what go. it is. Right, and the fish passage, that would be interesting too. I think we probably They care about that and certainly water that matters yep. to the farms there. Yeah. So I talked to Barb about your, uh, the mayor's comment yesterday. So when that meeting comes up.
Go ahead and just say it. They're trying to organize a meeting with well, yeah, the but federal government. Well, yeah, but Schrader's office is organizing it, okay. and they're going to send out the invites once they get okay. it all set up, so it's not coming from us. It just right. sounded like it was moving along, and he didn't know anything about it. I thought, yeah, oh, it's just premature. Want, uh, we're talking about Sorry. Salem Mayor being involved with discussions on Stakeholders. Detroit, and we want him there, obviously. Right. So, so many uh, people affected. It's interesting how that came up. Um, where were we? Oh, public works yesterday. Remember, I didn't bring it up. Somebody asked the question. I mean, it's it's out there. There's so many people that know about it and, and are impacted by it. That, uh, And I think that's good news. Um, last night, just uh, went to the uh, Sheriff's Advisory Council or Advisory Board. First time I'd gone out there uh, with them. They let me out of jail, by the way, after I was done. That was pretty nice of them. <laughs> uh, I was at the jail. And uh, on that public safety uh, service district, they were really, uh, you know, they asked some really good questions, had some really good input towards it. And then at the end, they said, hey, we want to participate and help with this and be, be involved. Uh, this is great. So um, it was a, a positive thing last night. Um, it was a good week. Or, I mean, it was Monday and Tuesday. Were, I mean, it's, today's Wednesday, but it's been a good week already, good week of meetings. Success stuff. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, shall we call this today? Can you get ready for me to be wound up and Yeah, yeah. you, you can you, you could just go ahead and take my nine minutes. Don't I usually? Well I I I'm good. I'll just fill in the blanks. You know what? I'm not gonna say anything now. You you push me over there. I'm just no, gonna no, no, be, no, no. I'm gonna have no, you start. No. No. Then you can do the fish passage second, and then I'll wrap up. You think that's a, that's the biggest concern out there? I mean, that, that we should talk about is bring that fish, bring the water issue I do. up. Yeah, okay. I do. Yeah, right. right. So you want to do that oh, first? You want to do that first, then, and then you go after? No, no. That's oh, Sam's sorry. rotary. Yeah, I think you need to start. I'm uh, think of something. I want to see, but the the other one that I maybe it isn't a big issue yet, but that railroad thing is certainly always festering in in the Almsville State area. I don't know where we're. I haven't going heard anything that. about it. Okay. I don't know where we are with the study. It's been in the newspaper. That. They were complimentary of the study. Yeah. Uh, Lynn County yesterday. Interesting always to go down there, um, but bringing them up to date like we needed to, and uh, not we didn't make an ask. Danielle did a, a really good job, um, but they. Uh, yeah, they, they, you know, on the Lynn County side in the canyon, they don't have the need for the, as much uh, for a sewer system. No. But um, they did say, have I reached out to Frank and Ferris? And I, I, well, I have a relationship, but I haven't really talked about this issue specifically, so I need to do that um, and see where they're at with it, if they're supportive or needs or whatever. I couldn't see a, that they'd have a need. I don't think with so. The amount of ground they have and right. the septics that they must have. Right. Uh, the, the one thing I did take away was, um, and Danielle got his card, but their their um, environmental septic guy, uh, the, the can-do attitude, and they try to figure out. They've had, he, the, one of the questions that their commissioners asked him was, are you doing a lot of denials? Because that's what Danielle said was happening on our side. And he said, no, I think it's, it's probably more status quo because people have been educated towards the issues and they may not be bringing them up. Um, but he said, when we, we get requests, we're trying to go out and trying to figure out how to make it happen for people, um, which I thought was really a, a good, well, good we've way. been trying to do that here, and I might just give you a happenstance. After we left Public Works, I went up and, sp and spoke to uh, planning, and then uh, Warren Jackson was talking to his septic people, as a matter of fact. So, of course, I said, can I join in? Oh, good. Well, the message I got out of them, that contrary to last year, that uh, they have the staff they need, and they're actually all caught up. So not hearing those backlog things. So that's good news. So we, we probably need to... Hmm. I gotta be careful here. We probably need to make sure that what community services staff is looking at from data and what you just heard are the same. Okay. Because they're actually pulling some data on um, permits and processes, or at least they did, and I'll have to go back and find out. I thought it was interesting that they were doing that. They had, they're doing some research on that issue and uh, find out when that research was done. 
because I got some numbers from them that was kind of uh, interesting that I thought, okay, at least we could track this and see what kind of improvements we're making. Yeah. Yeah, I hope it's true. It's yeah. like good. All right. Well, a lot of good things going on. I uh -huh. will be going to Staten today, so that's great too. All right, there's nothing else. We will adjourn.